Well, Tim, first of all, I mean, what what a, a mad sudden couple of weeks. I guess this is why you always say you've, you've got to be ready to step up because all of a sudden you've had a couple of games under your belt. How, how have you found it? Yeah, I've, I've uh, really enjoyed it. And like we said, the, the pace of it is takes you by surprise. But other than that, really, really enjoyed it. Yeah, uh, it, it, that's interesting you say that about, about the pace because you've been playing plenty of first-team football, I suppose, over uh, different clubs over, yeah. over the last couple of years, but you've noticed a big difference, have you, in, in the National League? Yeah, so like when I was at Step 3, if you put Step 3 to this, it's miles apart, and even National League North, that's a step up from Step 3, but even though it is just one league, the difference is still still quite noticeable when you're playing that. Yeah, um, I mean, your debut was crazy, wasn't it? I mean, what what an opening forty five minutes of football for Notts that was. What was going through your mind during all of that? Uh, don't do anything silly. <laughs> that, that was all. It was. I was quite nervous, to be fair. But I, like I said, I think to save the penalty was a little nerve settler. But then, other than that, it was just getting on with the game and making sure we do what we do. Yeah, had you been given much notice before the game that you were going to be playing? Uh, not really. Well, obviously, Sam pulled up on the Wednesday. Uh, Tom spoke to me and just said, prepare like you're going to play like you probably did with Arch. And then on the Friday when we come in, the gaffer said, look, you're playing. So not really. it was a bit of a whirlwind, yeah, but there wasn't that much time. Yeah, we sleep that night. Oh, I didn't even hear a word of that. Did you get much sleep? Sorry, did you not? Oh, no, it didn't pick up on the speakers. Uh, uh I don't know, because I was rooming with Sam because we went the night before and I don't think I was that nervous the, the night before. It was more the morning where I was like, oh, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm a bit nervous now. <laughs> How has uh, Sam Slocum helped you? I mean, it must be great having such an experienced goalkeeper around to, to be able to give you a, a bit of advice ahead of that game. Yeah, it's good. Like Sam's helped me for a number of years now. We've been through the COVID times. We've, we've been through everything and it was quite good to have him there at the Bromley game because I can always look to Sam and even like if something's happening here I'm like oh I'm not sure about that he's always there to help us out and even at the game I was like oh I don't know about this and he'd come in with his point and help me through it. Yeah. How important is that for you the, the listening thing I remember you going away with uh, um, at an England goalkeeping training camp and you'd got you know, some guest speakers there and stuff there's a lot to take in I guess a, a, a lot to learn is that something you quite enjoy that process of learning about this this job yeah but there's there's more there's more to it than what people think like we have our meetings with Tom we watch clips and there might be stuff where people from the outside think oh like, it's a good goal but we break everything down we have a look we so yeah it is it's a position where you've got to learn to try and make stuff into your favor so I do enjoy that yeah, and your your role at Knotts as well, of course. You're not just a, a goalkeeper, if you like. I mean, just a goalkeeper. What I mean is, it's not just about your hands. It's very much about your feet and and beginning attacks, isn't it? And we saw you do that, especially with the third goal at the weekend. Is that something you've always been comfortable with? Yeah, it's been kind of drilled in me from a young age, really. Even when I was at Wednesday, when I was younger, that that was their philosophy of playing through the thirds. And then, obviously, coming as a scholar here, when we had Bunny and Gordo. They would play, 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 no matter what, just play. So I've kind of got used to it and it's made the transition so much easier. How satisfying was that when you start an attack and then you see the ball kind of go through the thirds and yeah, it's a, it is the Matty Palmer to score? Yeah, I'm claiming that one. Even though he's scored, I'm claiming <laughs> it. Claiming it. It's got to go down as an assist, doesn't it? Oh, sure, yeah, it? an assist of an assist of, a, of an assist, yeah. <laughs> Um, you, you say that the pace of the National League has been different to what you're used to. I wonder about the the experience of actually playing at, at Meadow Lane in front of thousands of supporters as well, a game televised so different to, to perhaps what you've experienced before. Yeah, I think that that is the biggest crowd that I also played at. I was at Colville and got to the, the playoff final. And that was, even then, that was still a big crowd, especially when the grounds are smaller as well. You feel everyone's on top here, but now it was... That was unbelievable just to walk out. And even Connell said to me at breakfast, he was like, oh, this is this is something different, this. So, yeah, I really enjoyed yeah. that. It was class. So now you've had a taste for it, I suppose. It just made you even hungry, has it? Now? Oh, yeah, 100%. 100%. Good stuff, Taylor. Thanks very much. I'll hand you over to Ollie. Thanks. Cheers, pal. Uh, Taylor, uh, just a couple of follow-ups, really, from uh, Dave. So you, 
as we, you've discussed, you've been on loan twice this season. So how do you think that time away has prepared, prepared you for your debut against Bromley? Yeah, it's done me the world of good. Like I said, it's it just it ticks you over. Like step three wasn't the route I wanted to go straight away because I'd done that last season. But at that moment in time, that's that's what the market wanted. That's what the market was available to me. And it, like I say, it just ticks you over. It just keeps you ready. It keeps everything flowing. So yeah, it's probably the experience I need. You've now got that debut under your belt, but is the next step uh, you trying to cement a place in the first team, a regular first team place? Oh, 100%, but uh, unfortunately that's not down to me, that's down to the gaffer. And then do you see this part of the season as crucial, not only for yourself, um, but for the team as well? It's almost an opportunity for you to you know, grasp with both hands and you know, make, a, make a name for yourself. Yeah, there, there is that, and that's... That's just taking it game by game. Obviously, I want to have the best performance I can. I want to help the team. But like I said previously before in my interview the other day, it's what the team wants, what the team needs. And, and if the gaffer thinks that the different route is the best way to go, that's that's the best thing for the team. And then obviously you've made your lead debut at Meadow Lane at the weekend. So how was that hearing your name in the crowd? Does it give you that little bit of a buzz or is it making you a little bit nervous? It, it, gives, you that, it gives you that bit of a buzz because... Like I said, I was, I was very nervous making my debut at Medellin, but it gives you that confidence that the fans are behind you, so just give it all you can give. And then um, just finally, two goals uh, two goals conceded in your two games. How good would it be to get that first clean sheet on home soil tomorrow night? Yeah, it, it'll be brilliant. And Conor Levin said to me today that you've, I, I want that clean sheet. We both, all of us need the clean sheet now. <laughs>